to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submersible pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 635-9906 Jamano Money Transfer Bureau de Chance Your go-to option when it comes to money transfer With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible for your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051 or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Jamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Jamano Money Transfer. Fifty-six branches more so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ha. Gambia kono anin Gambia bantala bangol. Unko kono kia bere. Hmm? Kono sifa sifa fofa lindiro fanya di lafta meme na kodi topoto ni kodi mara. Jam no number one di nyonda. And num fana nata another enterprise is so dali. Wola mi ndi ko domoro fana ngol fana be fira le le daddy man in domoro di fana betiat. Ha. Gambia dau da ya lo ngapu fa kendol so dali di. Ha. E wo mo ya. Ha. Apelenda. Ni wo kani na lafta ni ala kendol le bi na. Ya le bu kani na kuol la. Ha ha ha. Ya lo ndel chosa no lo. Abarka. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia. 
trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit your Gambia Tonkona Lombaria Bir. Ha. Birin Kwena for Kato. But is it called Okino Kato Nim for Bolong Blabe? Fifty six branches more so the Gambia. Ha? Ha. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Banko. Nka Kono Kia Bedet. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindiro for Nadi left a member of Kodito Koton in Kodimaro. Jan number one in Yonta. And no for another another enterprise is sotale. Wall of Golem Nintuko, Domoro Fanan Kol Fanan Bay Fira de Dadi Man in Domoro Nilfan Petiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fakindol Sotale. Ha, what more ha? A parent of Yalom Kanyal left a Yal and Kendo Levina. Yalom Kanyal of Kol, Abarka. Yalom del Chosano. Abarka. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. and welcome to the brunch. I am Lamin Cham. This is our weekly look at uh, current affairs, that is uh, events that dominate the news in the past seven days. This week we will reflect on the major stories of the week as well as uh, the week before and they will take us to the National Assembly and to the various platforms and commentaries that uh, occupied the major news stories over the last week, as we always do. I have with me in the studio uh, the Honorable Mai Ahmed Fati. He is the leader of the Gambia Moral Congress, a former Minister of Interior and a key member of the coalition 2026 that uprooted the Teto Yajames regime after 22 years. Well, like they said, so much water has passed under the bridge since then, but uh, Mr. Fati still remains a key political player and leader of uh, his party, the GMC. 
Mr. Fati also is a trained legal professional and uh, over the last week or so he too has been having his take uh, on the issues that dominate uh, the public space and it is in continuation of that that we drag him into our studios to uh, have an opportunity for him to face the nation so to speak and uh, give us his thoughts on the topics we have discussed. After him too, we will also have the inter-party committee uh, who have been busy uh, with the presidential national dialogue campaign in the provinces. We will also put to them some of the issues that have been happening while we hear from them what they have been doing in the country over the last week or so. So stick around and uh, follow us. Mr. Fati, welcome to the brunch once again. Thank you very much, Mr. Cham. I am very much delighted to be here uh, this, this afternoon. Good. It's been a while since uh, we had you in the studio here, and obviously I will start with the obvious. How are you and the GMC? Well, we are uh, doing quite well. Um, uh, I think in this country we never stop politicking. Yeah. <laughs> Every day it's uh, some type of politics. Yeah. Um, what is important is in between elections you have to keep your your base um, activated, you have to keep it um, uh, moving and excited. Um, politics is very expensive, so <laughs> one has to be very strategic in the way you, you conduct your politics. So GMC is quite much alive. We are present in all of the regions and uh, we continue to um, to so to speak conduct our retail politics <laughs> yes. that is to talk to Gambians um, in the manner that is necessary in order to um, uh, to increase our membership and to sell our agenda mm -hmm. and as we approach the elections uh, there will be uh, substantive changes in, in our approach mm -hmm. for now all we are doing is we continue with our retail politics uh, keep our base intact yeah. and uh, try to maximize um, our memberships uh, uh, educational um, uh, improvement in, in terms of how uh, they will market the party and uh, the party's philosophy. Ah, good. Well, still staying with the party, that's very important because election is not far, because many people say 2026, 20, but you look at this a little over two and a half years to, um, or so to go. Um, and it will be important, the roadmap to the 2026 20, election, we still have uh, an imperfect electoral system, if, if you like, if you, if, you, if you want to argue the electoral, election amendment bill, which is uh, st still been prepared, the constitution, which provided for a lot more um, transparent or process of election is still not uh, back in the National Assembly. So how level you think is the field from 2021, let's say 2026 up to now? Well, um, you see, the, the legitimacy of an election mm -hmm. is not determined on what happens on election day. Okay. Election is a process, like you indicated. Mm -hmm. In other words, from the day that the new president was sworn in, mm -hmm. 2021, up to the next election, what transpired in between plays a pivotal role in determining what is going to be the result of the next elections. So it is both the campaigning and the... Uh, uh, electioneering processes mm -hmm. leading towards an election what happened that determines the legitimacy of an of the results of an election mm -hmm. so uh, these characteristics include access to uh, information mm -hmm. it includes uh, the ability to mobilize membership freely across the country mm -hmm. uh, it includes uh, the capacity to raise funds from your membership mm -hmm. and those that are entitled according to law uh, it also includes uh, political education, mm -hmm. civic education, and the the uh, the the, the uh, freedom of the political space, mm -hmm. the ability of political stakeholders to express their views, mm -hmm. uh, to organize themselves, to sell their agenda, and to freely tra travel the country, and also um, the opportunity to access the airwaves, you know, whether it's print or media, and of course now social media. All these are factors that determine what happens on election day. And suddenly, you cannot forget also. You cannot also talk about the uh, registration, uh, voter registration right. system. In fact, that is the most fundamental part. Okay. When the voter list registration is polluted, mm -hmm. you're going to have a polluted results. So all these are factors that count a lot. Good. 
So you must have had, as a uh, stakeholder, of course, the election amendment bill. Yes. Um, from what you understand, which areas does it want to improve in the system? Uh, one, it has, like, indicate the registration of elections. Elections, yes. The registration of voters. Yeah. We have an anomalous system that exists in very few democracies. Mm -hmm. And one of those, my, our main concern is the attestation. Yes. That you know, any village alcalo with uh, one or two elders can certify anybody to vote in an election. Oh, say for yes. who lives in fact mostly far away. Far away and doesn't know most, most, most of the people in his, uh, in, in his or her district. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that elections or participating in elections is the, is the greatest demonstration of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Because it is citizens who must determine who should rule over them. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a specific um, privilege that accrues only to national, to citizens of a country. Now, it must be clear that only citizens of a country must determine the type of government uh, that is going to rule over them. Mm -hmm. And that process has to be sanitized. Mm -hmm. And this is why everybody who should be on the electoral register must be a verified, certified Gambian citizen. Mm -hmm. And this is done through other ways. Production of birth certificate, you know, going towards national identification cards, and so forth. But on election day itself, one person appears with a piece of paper that does not even have a picture on it. No ID card, no, not even a, a passport size photo on it, just a bare A4 size, um, empty sheet of paper that has a name on it and says A, B, C, D, we are four elders, we certify that A, B, C, whose name appears on this, is a citizen of the Gambia and can vote. I think this is a very anomalous system. Okay. This we, we must not allow this to continue. To is, yes. Well, I, 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 it's, a, it's a very important thing. I mean, uh, illegal registration or fraudulent registration, as the people, uh, video eyes would, would call them, mm -hmm. existed under the Jawara regime. Under Jamme, it got worse. Mm -hmm. It is sad that there are every indications that there must have been illegal registrations on a massive scale in the last uh, presidential elections. Um, and like you said, attestation of Alkalolu and Sefolu was a problem to blame. How, uh, I've, I've already mentioned how different people have proposed that attestation should go out of the, of the election system. But then of course, the old argument still comes to play that not everybody has an ID card. If you eliminate attestation, you are going to disenfranchise a whole lot of Gambians. And this has been said over and over, and nothing has been done tangibly to get everybody issued with an ID card in the first place. There is no ID card happening at the moment. I mean, the contract with some legs have gone. People don't even have ID cards. Well, what, how serious is that kind of argument? Well, I agree. Um, the, every Gambian of uh, um, eligible age and characteristics entitled to vote at election is entitled to have a voter's card. That is the, the dictate of our law. But also we have national identity card, national identity card as an act that established the identity card, and mm -hmm. um, under which, um, according to law, an immigration officer, an immigration officer can stop any Gambian anywhere in this country and demand the production of an, of an identification card. That is the law. Many people do not know that. But it means acquiring a national identification card is an obligation on every Gambian. Mm -hmm. That is an obligation. And every Gambian, 18 years and above, mm -hmm. should acquire a national identification card. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe since a national identification card is a general requirement of the law mm -hmm. to be possessed by every Gambian, mm -hmm. We can infuse into the ID card system a voter's card system oh, so okay. that the national ID card would also serve as a voter's card. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose of having a voter's card is to verify and certify Where that a particular a voter is a Gambian. Yes. Now, if we have an ID card, a national identification card, mm -hmm. which is the, the insignia of citizenship, yes. then it should also serve the purpose for elections. Yeah, that qualifies one to get to that, that way we will be able to eliminate cost, this double cost double of cost. having both an ID card and a voter's card. Voter's card. And also, you know, we should make ID card accessible across the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that the, the budget, the money that goes into the production of 
uh, voters' cards will be added onto the production of a national identification card, mm -hmm. then we can have a, uh, a diversified system that will allow every Gambian to access a voters' card. I think this will be a practical way of looking at it. But it and, and now, mm -hmm. we also have this, um, um, this digital uh, birth certificate. Bad certificate. That allows every single Gambian, mm -hmm. even if you are 80 years old, mm -hmm. to have a birth certificate. Mm -hmm. That is also a law now. Mm -hmm. So um, we but must. But then they were, look at implementation. That was stopped. You, you know that, uh, that, that. I'm aware. Yeah. I'm aware. But we need to be serious as a people, mm -hmm. as a nation. Okay. We must invest in that, because investing in vital documents is strengthening our sovereignty, but also important for national security. That every Gambian ought to be in some type of database. Mm -hmm. So that we'll be able to distinguish so many aspects, not even services, but the fact that you know you are a national a Gambian citizen should be properly documented somewhere. Mm -hmm. And and because we are migrating, we are moving. The system is not foolproof now, but we have to transition somewhere. We cannot keep giving the excuse that because we do not have national ID cards and everybody do not have voters card and but at some point we must stop and say, okay, you know what? If you really want to participate in elections, make the effort and get the required document. Get a national ID card. People, if you go to the remotest part of this country, people are investing in so many stuff that are unnecessary. But so every Gambian of full age should be able to have the money to be able to invest in an ID card. And government has to really sensitize the nation towards that, uh, including in our, in our rural communities. So if you said, um the issue of the legitimacy of the register has to depend on true Gambians voting. Otherwise, if it is polluted with um, mm -hmm. uh, people who might have not been Gambians, then you have a verdict that will not reflect the will of the Gambian people. Absolutely. And, 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 and that is where the trouble is. Absolutely. Now, how to, because I'm, I'm going to, uh, this, this thing is important because I definitely, and I still hold that view, that the massive unprecedented voter apathy mm -hmm. that we witnessed during the parliamentary, the local government, and the mayoral elections, mm -hmm. I feel could not have been left to just voter apathy. Because I see region after region, especially in the mayoral elections, mm -hmm. close to half, in some cases, more than half of the registered voters did not bother to go to the polling station. They did not vote for UDP, they did not vote, vote for NPP or any other party that's in the ballots. Mm -hmm. Half of the population of voters could not have stayed away from the voters, from, the, from, 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 from participating in elections if they are in the country. If you tell me that over 169,000 people in West Coast region, as it happened in the mayoral elections, did not bother to take part in the mayoral elections. My conviction was they don't live here because nobody could have said you will miss all the ras matters and the politicking that happened during that time. Mm -hmm. And you never took interest in the PP, in the UDP or the NPP. No, I'm, 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 I cannot be convinced that those people are living in this country. So it, it, it really boggles the mind as to why are so many people not interested in the election of the mayor, even when you see the president of the republic or opposition leader campaign. What lesson did you learn from that? Well, it's a, it's a source of concern. Okay. Voter apathy is, is never good for any democracy, yeah. and certainly not for our own. Um, I think it is an obligation, a civic duty, on every Gambian to participate at every election. Election of a councillor all the way down to election of a president. Mm -hmm. So when we see numbers substantially dwindling mm -hmm. in any particular type of elections, then we need to research as to why this has been the case. Now, I do not have any scientific evidence at my disposal to determine the residents or otherwise of those who did not vote. But I do know that it has always been a historical trend in this country that presidential elections would attract more voter than you know other elections. Absolutely. Because um, of the stick. The Yes, and many governments well, also, is, many governments seem to be more interested that's right, you know, in, in the president the election is than, than in the mayoral elections. Yeah. And, and so, um, but this, the, the, the local, the council elections are, in my view, even more important. Important. Because they, they affect the, the daily lives of people more, more directly, more, more, more directly than uh, presidential elections. But that seems to be the case. 
when we were in the in the opposition, I mean, the time of the coalition, uh, the coalition 2016, we had always maintained that, you know, there were mobile electors, people who come in from across the border, yeah. and they were housed at schools, and housed right, at public right, centers. Guest houses. They vote, and then the next day they, they move. They disappear. Um, because why would it be necessary for a government to be housed at a school exactly. in order to vote? Exactly. Every government is from somewhere, exactly. you know, from a village, from a town, from a district. There was no need to house anybody. Mm -hmm. So clearly you could see that these uh, machineries mm -hmm. were imported in order to uh, to, to distort the uh, election, or re election results. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm not sure if the same trend is, is visibly happening, because uh, we... You said visibly. Yes. But it, it could have been happening. Well, this is what I'm saying, that it, it is possible that people across the borders may still have our election, our ele electoral cards, of and course. may still participate in our elections. Because the fact that even the government admits mm -hmm. that people in other countries, particularly Senegal, do carry our national ID cards. I tell you, the health minister, said this in National Assembly. He said, one of the reasons why there are no enough drugs for the people in our country is that 30% or more of our drugs goes to people who come to get treatment here, but we cannot deny them because they hold Gambian national identity cards. Well, that is so, where... so, so, so if somebody can get a national ID card to come and access our hospitals, what would stop that person from participating in our elections? I quite agree with you. But you see, to, to assert that because a person lives in Senegal and, or across the border and is in possession of Gambian, Gambian documents does not in itself disqualify that person from holding Gambian citizen. We need to determine because uh, Gambian, there is a lot of cross marriage. There's a lot of marriages no, but, across, but across the borders. But from, from what um, the minister said, Gambia he's telling you there's no doubt that those people are not Gambians. Well, what happened is that they come with Gambian, hold, Gambian ID cards and they would have to access our drugs just as we Gambians are entitled to. A National Assembly member in Kabada, just across... Yes, the, yes, but what I'm saying is that... Is, uh, I, is, uh, I understand. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, understand said, I understand the minister may have said that. The yes, minister may have said that. Yes. But uh, what I'm saying is that it's a question of evidence. We need to be able to establish that those coming across the borders into the Gambia and holding Gambian national identification cards are not really Gambians. Absolutely. We need, we need to be able to establish that. The, the fact of living in another country is not in itself. I know that's not good. It's not in itself evidence that you are not a Gambian citizen. Yeah, but that's... Because I have family members yeah, but uh, who, who, are, who are married outside this country, that's uh, in, in, in Senegal, that's possible. Uh, around Velingara and so forth. In fact, uh, I have half of my family living in Velingara. You yeah. know, my grandfather's uh, brothers uh, live in Velingara yeah. from Gambia. They went but, in for farming yeah. and they decided to live in there. Yeah. Now, their children, yeah. some of them attend school in Gambia, mm -hmm. and some of our cousins are married to them. Yeah. These are Gambians. Yeah. But, so they have Gambian citizenship. They have a right to participate in elections, mm -hmm. but they live across the border. Mm -hmm. They have a right to come. Mm -hmm. Now, we must establish the statistics. Yeah. How do they acquire? For me, that is the fundamental that, question. That's where the, the question is not someone is in possession of a Gambian uh, document. We need to make acquisition of Gambian, uh, 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 Gambian documents very strict, very stringent. That yes. was my goal when I was Minister of Interior. Exactly, that's why I'm coming. I have suspended. I'm, coming. Yes. I, I, I'm coming there. When yes. you were Minister of Interior, yes. you made it a point of duty that the criteria to fit or to acquire that citizenship must satisfy and is strict and satisfied. You know, Absolutely. But I mean, I mean, the system was abandoned when you left. Well, I, I, I had to suspend the issuance of all national documents for yes. three, three months. Yes. Exactly. No passport, no ID cards were issued. Yes. Totally stopped, looked into the policy to sanitize it. Exactly. And we went ahead to cancel all previous national identification documents. Exactly. And then we start afresh yeah. using authentic documentation and interviewing process. Very yeah. rigorous process. Yeah. Now, Very rigorous. I remember people were saying, oh, now if you go to the ID card, they doubt whether you are a Gambian. It's very difficult to acquire. People commended that process because at least that was going to weed out people who are not Gambian. We put the onus on the applicant to prove his citizenship. Yeah. You come in there, you must prove, prove to us you are a Gambian citizen. And when the documents come, if there are question marks, then we have the SIS. They are part of the process. We have the police criminal investigation unit, they were part of the, the process. We had the military investigation unit, they were part of the process. So all these units will go with your documentation, 
in order to ascertain and verify and come independently and say, well, this is our finding, this is our finding. So it could take time. And sometimes the questioning would determine if you are from Kabada, then you'll be asked typical local questions about Kabada that every citizen of Kabada ought to know. Ought to know. Now, if you are dealing, dealing in that, well, then there's a problem. Then, then there's a problem. If you uh, say your father, then we ask you, sometimes you will require to bring your grandfather. Your grandfather That's right. is That's dead. Told, Go yes. and bring your grand aunt. You know, yes. so it's it's a rigorous process. It was a rig- because we did people, not have a record many pe- system. Many people believe some of these things might have led to your sacking from the government because they think yeah. um, people who might have gone to the president said, you know, you know, my policies are going to disenfranchise a lot of people who might this, this might affect your election process, etc., etc. People think some of these stringent measures that must have led to your your sacking from cabinet. People wouldn't. People who might not have been happy with it might have make it an issue of a political issue that might affect whatever plans the ruling party has or the government at the time has, and all this might have led to your sacking. You, you still you believe that? That well, might not be the case. Well, that's uh, that's what a you know. Ah well, no, that's, that's what a person I mean, that uh, We still don't know what we still don't know what uh, what led to the sacking of this very popular minister at the time. Well, I, I we conclu- still don't know. I conclude you that. You didn't tell us. The president said it was for national interest. That's where he stopped. You still, you still did not tell us why you left cabinet. Like I said, I, 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 I don't know. But uh, what I always believed that the constitution of this, Gumbi, this country mm-hmm. grants the president authority to hire a minister and the authority to relieve a minister. And he's still doing that. And and the president, the constitution did not require the president to give any, any explanation. Any explanation. Yeah, even when, even and, when the citizen wants it. And in my own case, yeah. I am a man of faith. Yeah. I am a, a very strong Muslim and I believe in Allah. Uh, I believe in destiny. I believe that it was predetermined mm. that I will be appointed minister up to on the, up to the, the 10th of November 2017 and on that day god had already decreed that i will be relieved you of my believe, responsibility you believe, so so you, so as a muslim you believe in that I, as, yes i do I, as a muslim i believe that that was the day that you god had determined you don't that i'll believe be some machinations behind the scenes you know by people who don't like your ways in government you know who I, I probably that, think who probably think you are a potential political rival in future all these backslabbings and you know called dodgeries might have led to your sack. You don't you don't believe in anything. I right? believe that if if they those existed, then they would have been enabled, and enabled and allowed to happen by Allah, because that was the destiny. If Allah willed that I would not be fired on the tenth of November, twenty seventeen. There was no way that President Barrow would have the capacity to fire me. Okay. That, that is my conviction. Oh, right. So, so I, I believe there may be factors, contributory factors that mm. may have motivated it, led to it. Mm. But I'm a man of faith, and I believe that um, my destiny is in the hands of Allah. What happened on the 10th of November 2017 is history it's behind me. I no longer reflect on it. I think it was a lesson. I have learned several lessons out of that. Um, I've now moved on. Oh, okay. Moved on. Now. Still on the matter of national, you you followed the, and you made a commentary yourself. Yes, um, yes. Oh, let's let's take it with the national ID card. At the moment, you know the national ID card issue uh, is that um, nobody has been issued one, even though the government collects money f- from people and issued them uh, documents that will represent as ID cards. People have criticised that. The ministry, the minister was in national assembly not long ago to say that. Uh, uh, issuance of national ID card may resume in August. Yes. But then, of course, they are, they are in the newspapers currently, there is an advertisement which suggests that they are in, you know, inviting beatings uh, you know, for the award of that contract. That's still confusion. Mm-hmm. The Semlex issue and the stoppage in ID card issue, as somebody who had headed that ministry, uh, I must say quite efficiently, what do you think when, uh, had gone wrong? And how would you have addressed it if you are still in office? Well, um, first, you have to get to know the facts. That is one. Well, the fact uh, is that the similar contract has been terminated. I don't know why it has been terminated. That's what I mean. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not inside at the moment. I'm not at the ministry. And, you, and I haven't did had you have any... anything to do with Semlex when you were there? There, was not, there wasn't any Semlex? No. It was a different company. I had no. When when I was in there, like I indicated, we had suspended issuance oh, of okay, you national have documents, yeah. and we started um, vetting possible um, possible companies that would 
uh, handle out. Semlex was yes. not in the picture at the time. Uh, Semlex was in the picture, but Semlex had the contract. Semlex had not been awarded any contract. Any contract at yeah. the time. When I left the ministry, no company was awarded a contract to produce national ID card. Mm. Semlex was being talked about, but under me as minister, I did not sign or award any contract to Semlex. Exactly. I, I left the ministry mm. after my departure. Yeah. Then my successors decided to award the contract to Semelex. I did not award any contract Semelex. to Semelex or, or to any nas to any company. I think we were trying to sanitize. Like mm. I indicated, there were too many problems with it. Mm. And we thought acquiring the national ID card is a vital document. Mm. It is the foundation for everything. If you have a national ID card, you can contest presidency. Mm -hmm. And we cannot have non-Gambians you know, contesting, contesting presidency. presidency. We cannot. And if you have a national ID card, you're entitled to our passport. Mm. You cannot travel across the, all over the world, you know, presenting your image as a gunman when you are not. Mm. I mean, this is, this is wrong. And also you are entitled to consular protection. Mm. When something goes wrong outside the country, the holder of a gunman passport is entitled to be protected by our consular agencies outside. It's entitled for intervention. In fact, it's even entitled to be repatriated back home using government funds. Mm -hmm. Because you carry a symbol, a document that says you are a Gambian, and you remain under the protection of the Gambian, Gambian government domestically and internationally. Mm -hmm. These are huge responsibilities. They are all indices of sovereignty. Yeah. You cannot have these documents easily. There's no country mm -hmm. that would just donate their documents easily like that. Okay. So before I left, mm -hmm. we were looking into how do we make it how do we um, really sanitize the, the issuance, the acquisition, and the policy? Mm -hmm. In fact, there was no policy. There was no policy dealing with national identification cards in the Gambia. There were no policies dealing with driver's licenses. There were no process dealing with even voters' cards. There was no policy in place. Mm -hmm. You cannot deal with these things without a policy. We need to have a policy first. Mm -hmm. Then the policy will guide the strategy what what do what do we do this is where i was because we came in and when i came in as minister i didn't even have a handing of a note mm. because it was a coalition oh, of course you had kicked the, out the, the last we came in yes you uh, had kicked out the last government unceremoniously so, so you didn't expect it there was <laughs> yes so, 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 so i came in as a blind man into the ministry trying to you know grapple in the dark mm. so we had to do all these things first mm. so i didn't even get to the point where we can talk about now a policy is in place now we have sanitized the thing now let us begin producing identification cards let us begin identifying companies we have i have not reached that point i see then so i i could not have is uh, but what do you make of the present happening well um I think right now, as you indicated, because I am also a user of, of these services, I you know both ID card and passport are not being issued. No passport. Uh, sorry, been, ID passport card. Been I mean ID card and uh, driver's license yes. are not being issued at the moment. Mm. Um, the minister had uh, spoken to the nation through parliament that are between seven to the ninth of August. Yeah. You know they will begin issuance of identification. Yeah, cards. but the confusion is there's an advertisement currently going in the papers that suggests that they are inviting bead bidders. Suggesting that the contract is still not awarded. Well, I, I, I can only go by what the minister says publicly. Okay. Like I know, I don't know what, what the internal intricacies are, and I cannot speak to them. Mm -hmm. But the minister would not have advised Parliament publicly mm -hmm. yeah. that this process could begin. He said three. The night. He said three groups were contacted, where we approached, and one responded positively. They started printing out. They were happy with their technical products. Well, he said he saw, he saw yeah, he the said print he out, said, and yeah, they're happy with and it. And they're happy with it. So meaning, meaning that at least they, there's a short list somewhere. Exactly. There's, there's some consensus Cons coming at some point. Yes. So if they are inviting bidders, perhaps... Well, that, it, that's, that's, that's an advert going on in the papers. Well, it may relate to something else. Maybe they may have already determined on, on who is going to be the next, mm. uh, the next company to print our documents. Ah. Um, the bidding may relate to maybe consumables ah okay consumables talk about all right uh, in the last few days there has been a lot of controversy mm -hmm. as to what the president might have said or oh, people believe he has misspoken mm -hmm. when he said uh, in response what at the political rally in response to what he claimed was a claim by the leader of the opposition udp that when he comes to power he is going to take his compound uh, that's what Barrow claimed, even though um, the opposition leaders, supporters, are saying that, in fact, he never said he would come to power and take it. He said, if any or other, another government may come to power, and you may lose the compound, and you wouldn't say you have not been warned. 
But in, what's important is that the president said there that uh, in that case, then he's not going to leave the presidency until uh, the opposition leader dies and he attends his burial, and that's the time he would consider leaving the presidency. Many people believe this speech uh, is definitely, if it is a joke, as his lieutenant said, then it's a joke taken too far. Uh, of course, we had opposition politicians, uh, if you said they made a big meal out of it, if, if that's what you want to see it. But other people have spoken who may not be politicians, and they still believe that uh, the president has misspoken. What's your views on that as a political leader? Uh, well, uh, for me, um, people must be responsible for their reactions to statements. Uh, when I make a statement and you know, your action will determine the consequences of my statement. Um, but for me, what is important is whatever statement is made either by the president or by any other political leader, uh, I view it in this way. Is, is, does that statement contain anything that has the capacity, capacity or the potential to improve the living condition of Gambians? Is it going to improve the living condition of Gambians? If you follow through, is it going to bring about any ostensible changes into the lifestyle of Gambians? Is it going to move the economy? Is it going to do something towards uh, unemployment? Is it going to affect uh, the healthcare policy? Is it going to improve education? Is it going to improve the digital divide between the urban and the rural areas? I mean, is, is, it, is it going to grow the economy? I mean, essentially, this is how I look at it. A lot has been said by both sides. I don't want to, um, I really do not, I have no desire to, uh, to trade on trodden grass. What I would rather like to talk about today um, on, on the national issue is uh, what, should we, what do we do about unemployment? What do we do about growing the economy in order to generate employment, to create wealth? What do we do about our educational system, which is in this area, the number of uh, uh, passes we see at the primary level, there's a huge bottleneck that needs uh, radical improvement. What do we do about higher education and to make it more accessible to more Gambians? What do we do after higher education, transition from education to uh, the work of life, labor market? Mm. What do we do about uh, um, the, the unsatisfactory healthcare system? The government is trying to do it, its utmost best, but we still have a lot of issues with our educational, with our healthcare system. What do we do about that? What do we do about uh, the thousands of Gambians who are going to get cut off from main roads, particularly in rural communities, because of inundation, because of flood and so forth, and okay. also also urban flooding. These are issues we need to talk about. So, so, what do we do about, about food inflation? Yeah. These are ab absolutely important. Uh, what do we do about um, leveraging technology in order to fight poverty. These are, these are issues that are of great concern right. to Gambians. I, and these are the issues right. I'd like to focus on, exactly. not, uh, not statements by politicians at political podium. Well, th these are quite important issues. Um, yes. But going back to the statement and your perception of it, mm -hmm. you fell sort of describing or categorizing it, um, <laughs> whether it is he has misspoken or is a threat. But you said statements from politicians should be about improving the quality of the living of the people. You think any politician who speaks, especially the president, this is what we should judge, whether the statement actually improves the condition and living of the Gambian people. That's what you said. Yes, what I'm so, saying, so what? So what? In a sense, in a sense so what I'm, let me what, just. Uh, so does the president? This statement by the president actually fall into your, that category, which no, should improve people's lives? No, no, no. You are you are mischaracterizing what I had said. What I'm saying is, I think statements can be made by anybody, any political figure. It is our reaction to those statements that matters, whether it's toxic or not. That's very important. Because even in countries that got into instability, it is the reaction of the media and the people that led to untold consequences. I am saying that I would so, rather... So it's not politicians who are in the first place not to blame for coming with incendiary statements. It's the media that should be blamed for amplifying. No, no, no. I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I do not want to focus on the president's statement and the reactions to it. Because I believe that those are political statements made at the podium. However you may characterize it, I do not want to focus on it. 
What I want to focus on is things that are impacting the lives of our people. Because statements in, in themselves do not change people's lives. It is the consequence so of statements. Sta you don't take statements that's kind of um, people feel offended or people feel it's not statementship are not important. It's just people's reaction that is important and not, and not what the statement itself is. I would like to focus on what is the main concern of the Gambians. Whatever the president said, mm -hmm. has it led to the reduction of bag, price of bag of rice? Has it? it? It did not. Whatever the other side may have reacted to it, mm. did it change the price of electricity? <laughs> it didn't. That's what I want to focus on. Things that will change those things. That's what I want to focus on. I do not want to focus I'm not, on other I'm not, I'm not. It's not important to let the politicians, such as yourself and the president, understand that they cannot say this, they cannot say this. Well, I'm That's not, not important. I'm, I'm not, I am not in a position to determine what anyone should say or not. Mm. I control what I should say or not. Mm. And, what, and, I, and I guide my followers what they should say in the exercise of their democratic rights. Everybody should assume responsibility for your actions and your statements. But I believe that whatever statement we should focus on should have the ability to move this country forward. And if it does not do that, then it is meaningless. I want to focus on issues that are of concern to the ordinary man at Kosemar. We are now in the, in the rainy season. You know, farmers are concerned about fertilizer. Rains are not coming as they ought to. Mm -hmm. I just came from the province not long ago. I mean, rains really, they are crying for, for, for rain. We are, yeah. We're praying that there will be enough rains. Okay. The, because these are poor people. I'm from a village who are pre pre predominantly farmers. Yeah. My father was a farmer. I myself farm on the farm. Yeah, absolutely. And like you, yeah. like many of us from the absolutely. rural areas, yeah. we know how farming is very important to our, our communities yeah. and how it is important to this country. We are now in the rains. I want to talk about agriculture. Yeah. I want to talk about how to fight poverty. These are the issues that are important to our people. Yeah. That's what I'd like to focus on and not, you know, these other peripheral matters. Okay. We talk about the judicial, uh, I mean, officer's remuneration bill. You've been a lawyer. Finally, this is our topic. Uh, you've been a lawyer. There have been a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, the government uh, in presenting the bill, argued that they want to, uh, I mean, breach the disparity that exists in other jurisdictions and ours compared to ours when it comes to remunerating our judges and our uh, judicial officers, you know, who are doing a job that they believe it's uh, unique in such a way that they are restricted, you know, uh, you know, to do other things that might give them money and then the job had to be attractive for Gambians to desire to take up positions there. But many people believe that what they failed to say was that they actually wanted uh, the salaries and pensions to be better, improved. You know, many people feel that, well, given the disparity now in terms of the wages, this is uh, uh, money too high morally for the government to offer, to propose. Um, what is your take on that? It's still before Parliament? Canada is a poor country. Mm -hmm. The economy is very restricted. It's a pretty, um, pretty much we are a donor dependent economy, mm -hmm. tax base, which is not sufficient exactly. to get us anywhere. Mm -hmm. We are at the mercy of the international community. Mm -hmm. Our resources are very scarce. We need to make prudent use of our resources. Mm -hmm. Poverty is biting and continues to bite. And we are not doing much about that. I think we need to focus on productive sectors, sectors that are going to grow the economy so that we'll be able to confront poverty and ameliorate its incidences. That should be the focus of government. With regards to the Judicial Officers Bill, mm. I supported it. Oh. I, came, I came out publicly and supported the bill should, be, should, should pass. Yeah. Um, because we are a nation of laws. We have a constitution from which all other laws emanate their strength from, emanate their strength, derive their strength. It is the constitution, it is law that says that um, you know, the judicial officers, the welfare and remuneration uh, would be provided for in an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. The constitution talks about it, but it did not detail it. Mm -hmm. It states that an act of parliament will specify its details. Mm -hmm. So that is a constitutional imperative. Mm -hmm. If the constitution says this thing exists or this thing will exist, but an act of parliament should specify its uh, it's, Define it, yeah. Yes, it's details. Mm -hmm. Now, th that is the dictate of the constitution that there should be an act of parliament to deal with it. Yes. So first and foremost, 
it is a constitution that says there should be a law dealing with the remuneration and the welfare of judges. Mm -hmm. That is what the constitution says. There should be a law. Yeah. Now, since, 19, since uh, 1997, there has been no such law. So the Gambia has reneged in complying with the constitutional mandate of creating a law that will deal with that particular matter. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes out now, mm -hmm. we have complied with the dictates of the constitution, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. So it is not just because judges wanted it. Mm -hmm. The constitution says we should have it. Yeah, that's right. Now we have a law. Mm -hmm. What is the content of the law? That yeah. is where the controversy that's is. That's why the controversy The controversy is, uh, it is not also dealing with the immediate um, increase of salaries. It didn't say... But eventually that's what's intended. It, there has to be a progressive increase. But, but eventually that's the intent. Just like for all other civil servants, but there yes. should be a progressive increase in salaries. But, but listen, yes. eventually the bill seeks to enhance salaries and other benefits of the merchants. That is, uh, that is the ultimate objective, isn't it? So that, so because the, the yeah, bill... That, should, that is the ultimate objective. The bill, according to the constitution, yeah. There should be a bill that would regulate. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. So, so the bill seeks to regulate how it will be improved. Yes. That's and right. then how will be improved? Exactly. Okay. That is what the bill seeks to yes. achieve. Exactly. But the bill does not stand alone. Yes. The bill is attached to the constitution, which says you should have a law to regulate it. No, we got that. We put the okay. Law. Now, now, if the law is there, if yes, if, if now if now. now have a bill, yeah, that should regulate yeah. judicial officers' remuneration and other benefit entitlements. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with what the constitution says you should do. Nobody. Now, the problem is people, yeah. people misunderstood that by creating a law yeah. that regulates their remuneration and other welfare, yeah. automatically is going to lead to an increase, an astronomical increase. Now, that is not what the bill says, in fact. The bill is not saying that. Exactly. But what has been proposed by this bill? Such as? No, I mean, such as, what you are saying is improving, yes. improving, uh, and the minister said, to bridge the gap. Yes. As to what obtains elsewhere and here, and to make it attractive for Gambians to take off. Everybody loves that. Yes. But they are saying that compared to what other sectors of the public service are earning, mm -hmm. this is morally not acceptable. You argue with the fact that where a judge earns 150000 and knows in a hospital where you come from is getting $5,000. So a judge can pay a nurse, a doctor who's going to see him at the hospital, 12 times. That's, what, that's the argument. Is it morally acceptable? Well, I, think, I think the argument should be yeah. we should have an equitable exactly. salary system for the whole civil exactly. service. Exactly. But that does not negate the fact yeah. that this law, which the constitution says should be promulgated, yeah. should not be promulgated. Nobody said the law should not be promulgated. They said the monies that have been envisaged and the other duties are colossal and un, not, not sustainable and not morally acceptable giving what obtains in the same public service. But the bill did not specify any amount. Well, it says things that people found difficult to But that's understand. what I'm saying. What, we, did the bill, say, did the bill say you should increase the salaries of judges by 10%, 20%? It did not say so. Oh, the bill it, did not specify any amount which lawyers, no, the judges, should be paid. It pay, it correct, it defines certain privileges and certain benefits that are to come, and that found people find and those, difficult. Those can be debatable. <laughs> okay, that's those, what those that's debatable. where people found difficult. Now let, let me talk about some of those things. Ah, well, for example, it says if you serve for a number of years, sixty-five years, you retire on your salary. You can retire on your salary. In other words, if you are earning ten thousand, yeah, you, you retire. You, with you retire in ten thousand. A lot of people are not doing that. that. that I don't that, get that. That is that is the ninety percent of the people that don't get that. When yes. they retire, they get just a fraction of. Let, let us look at it. Is, no, well, well, it is. I agree with you. No, okay, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you that there is a legitimate public concern. Exactly. I am right. not disputing that. Yeah. The public have a right to be concerned exactly. about um, about what is called a partial or an unfair increase in terms of what they perceive uh, salaries and allowances for judges. Where the argument is. Yes, but then, like I indicated, the public are misinformed because the bill did not say you have to increase by this amount except the one that says you can retire on, on your salary. And it's not everybody. Usually at 80 years, my friend, 80 years, how long are you going to live afterwards? But then, but then, but then let's come to the rationale. You see, nobody, many, many of the people who oppose this bill are not looking at the race rationale. What is the factors behind reaching that conclusion? People don't look at that. In this country, people often jump to conclusion without looking at the logical steps, without even being aware of the policy behind, uh, behind the proposal. They just hear one thing from A, and a lot of people jump on A 
without even knowing why it has said so. Mm. Because in this country, people don't people are lazy. Many people are lazy. They don't they don't investigate. They don't research. And most of the information we are getting is from social media, which is mostly false. No, it's more, mostly about this, disinformation. You see, and most disinformation. people's argument so, is not it's not what the legal the legalities you are talking about. Everybody agreed what you said. There should be a law. Restricted. What people are saying that the, we have the salaries. We have this, we know the salaries of the uh, executive. We know the salaries of the legislature, the ones they have uh, approved for themselves uh, in the last budget year. Mm -hmm. We know now what has been recommended in terms of privilege and benefits for the judges. The argument is whether or not these people, they, they, people are saying that compared to the remainder, 90% of the people who also work and are entitled to payment, these people are, mourning, are getting money that is so colossal and unacceptable compared to the rest of the people. That's where the argument is. What you said is not, not the rational. Everybody knows the rational. In fact, the very fact that people are not taking these jobs. Because you, for example, you are earning, you are earning a lot of money as a private... As, as you were earning a lot of money as a private lawyer. Well, I'm a private lawyer still. Still now? Yes. Lawin Kamara? Yes. If probably you offer him a chief justice, he wouldn't even take it. Of course. All right. No. Because it's, so now it is definitely important to judge, for judges to be paid well. Nobody is arguing that. But well, we are trying to say that it should come as part of a system where all the areas of government service will also get something. Is it, Mr. Chairman, so that's where I, the argument is. That, that is not so they are point. totally saying that the very fact that you are increasing these three arms of government are getting a lot of money when others are not is unfair. Is it, I, that is, my beef is not about that no the legality am, everybody knows no i am not saying i mean i'm not i'm saying that these things are not mutually exclusive it is not because you have a law regulating the welfare and salaries of judges being promulgated as dictated by the constitution that you should abandon that unless you increase the the other side this cannot be done that is that is not true nobody said no, no let me finish i want to land here one what i want to clear what i want the public to understand is this law about judges, their welfare and their salaries, this law is coming out, in fact, very late. It is not because judges want such a law to exist. It is because the Constitution says such a law should exist. It is the Constitution that demands the creation of this law. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution is the reflection or the aspiration of the Gambians, of the common people. If the constitution replay, uh, rep represents the wishes of the Gambians, mm. then that wish is reflected through the creation of a law mm. dealing with judicial officers' salaries and their welfare. So let us, let, I'm coming. Let's number one. Track now. Yes, let, let us get that clear. One. Yeah. Mm. Number two, uh, whatever is contained in there, the public has a right to say, wait a minute, Al although this law should exist, but it is proposing measures that we believe are not consistent with our economic conditions. That's the argument. Now, now, what most people do not understand mm. is that the law itself mm. says judges' salaries and their welfare will be increased according mm -hmm. to the prevailing economic circumstances of the country. That is what is in the law. Okay. So if the law itself prescribes because the constitution says the law should exist to regulate, mm -hmm. And that law itself self-regulates mm -hmm. and says your salaries and allowances will be increased according to the economy of this of the country. Yes, I think that should be enough. But where are so so but so where so, it comes also. So, so therefore, so therefore, therefore, but in precise no, let me conclude. Bill, let me conclude. The minister said, no, I will conclude. So therefore, let me just conclude. So yes. therefore, the law itself it regulates how their salaries will be increased. Yes. it will not be against the economic circumstances, the but consistent with the economic circumstances. Very good. This is why. Mm -hmm the law did not specify an amount of money mm -hmm. that should be increased okay it did not specify how much the allowances or percentage mm -hmm. it says we are going to do this progressively according to how the economy dictates okay most people do not understand that part too but he also said yes it is going to bridge the gap between what obtains in other jurisdiction and here and what obtains in other jurisdiction might not be the same economic uh, uh, company in the bill what the minister says is not important to me well, well, well that's what, what that's the intention no no, no, no. i look what? i look at what is in the law yeah but what the bill say this is what the bill says the yeah. minister can't say anything yeah but they say okay, he can even, say anything even there, the, the, the preamble to the bill said 
it is going to be compared to what obtains in other jurisdictions. You have heard that. No, no, it says it says no. The preamble says really no, it, 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 is, it is to attract. They, it is to attract to attract Gambians. Uh, to accept these things, but I think the, and the difference the, between he what obtains here and other jurisdictions. You, you see, that? I I agree that uh, well, security uh, officers. Uh, I agree. Uh, I agree that nurses. <laughs> I agree that teachers. Uh, all of them, their salaries should be increased. What uh, they are what they are given is not enough to sustain them monthly. Right. I, I think their salary is is um. It is starvation. No, starvation wages. I I I, 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 I know. I, I know that a lot what, has to be done. You, what you buy gas well? Uh, what you buy fuel? Uh, every day is what they and for whole month. Well, well, I know, I know that is unfortunate. That's right. And the minister of civil service came forward and and. And you know what he said? Yes. He said, when the revenue of the state improves, then they will increase the salaries of civil servants. He was asking Parliament, what are the plans to increase government? He said there was a, a, an exercise that recommended, uh, I mean, increments across the board, but because that was too expensive. It was abandoned, and then this thirty percent increment was implemented, which everybody criticized to favor only the high, highest, and you know the highest earners. Obviously, everybody knows that if you increase somebody's salary thirty percent, only the highest earning salaries benefits. And he was asked again, "When will that be?" He said, "Well, when the revenue of government improves." And he said, "If he goes as now, so in that revenue is improving. So why don't you wait for the revenue to improve before?" Before recommending salaries for ministers, before increasing salaries for ministers, allowances for ministers, allowances for parliamentarians, <laughs> buying Prado three hundred three million cars for uh, I mean MPs, you don't you better wait until the economy you don't wait until the economy improves that, but for the nose who's earning three thousand you have to wait until the economy improves. That's what well, I well, I, like I indicated, um, every government should be interested in providing a good standard of living for his people. And I believe that um, it would be in the interest of government. And suddenly I believe government is interested in, in some of these things. But for me, my focus is I strongly believe and I advocate that the salaries of teachers in particular, salaries of security officers, police and so forth, salaries of nurses and watchmen. There are too many watchmen working on the government and drivers. All of these people should be entitled and to, judicial officers should be entitled what to, mean, to salary to salary to salary increase their salary should be increased and i believe um it should be disproportionate whenever government is increasing salaries exactly. it should be maybe 50 percent the, for this for these people and maybe two or three percent that's for the, the argument answer. not that the, not i that believe that should not be that the case. judges shouldn't be paid well then. that's the argument now you're talking that's, that's not, the public uh, argument but what, what the public argument that's is the right public. no the public the public got it wrong okay. because the public is saying that no 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 this judicial we are against this bill <laughs> if you don't inc in increase this we are not we are not going to support the bill <laughs> but what the public does not know yeah. that the bill doesn't contain any figure uh, it will eventually it will eventually do so because no, no, said there no. should be a commission that should review and recommend stuff like that exactly eventually. but then the, the preamble said the objective is to enhance the benefits of it what is enhancement well the preamble is what is enhanced the preamble is not an enforceable part of the law <laughs> it is so what, tell, but what is it the, tells what the objective of the bill is it is it's it, the objective the preamble said the objective of the bill i i want i want the public to understand that the preamble is a guide but it is not part of the law. But it the tells, preamble, the preamble, it, you cannot tells, enforce the preamble. It tells us what is intended. Precisely. That's right. And but, it said eventually, it is for the enhancement of the benefits and salaries of it. What is enhancement? But I don't. Yeah. But I don't see anything wrong in enhancing the benefits and salaries for of, of, nobody. Of, of the judiciary. Yeah. But so when we said that is going to enhance it, are we wrong to say that? No, no. We, we, the purpose of the, the the problem is the, the word the word taboo is increased. They don't want to hear that. No, no. This that, is seeking to increase. No, it's not. And eventually, no, it's going to increase. No, no, no. It what they are earning today? No, no. The, the the bill did not say anyway. it's going to increase. The bill says it will regulate, and there would be you know a, a body that will review exactly review and, and make review. and make it benef uh, attractive. So it, it, if, if you are trying to some, make something attractive, it's no. It's at the, its present state, it's not attractive enough. Mr. Cham, it will make it attractive in accordance with the ability of the economy to support it. That is what the bill says. As well as what obtains in other jurisdictions. If what obtains in other jurisdictions... That's what is in the premise. No, if what obtains in other jurisdictions is consistent with the economy of the Gambia, so it will be improved. That is what the bill says. The bill did not so say... So one word, one word for the parliamentarians with this bill. Pass it. Well, in my view, yes. this, this is a bill that should be passed. I want, I, and, and let me surprise why, you. Why, why did let, I... Let me surprise you. No, no, no. I want the bill passed, but yes. I want 
a systematic, comprehensive, holistic of what revision of all salaries. We are on the same side. There we Seriously. go. I, I, also, I also want this bill. I want it to pass. Yeah, what, because I want my party to take the position of Chief Justice. Oh, no, no. Or no, to no, take no, the justice well, for well, well, High Court judge. I'm, I'm not thinking about that. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, not thinking. I'm saying there should be enough money for anybody to be attracted to pick I, it. I think we have we have uh, very good senior lawyers who can who should take no, up I'm just saying example. the Supreme Court, yes. Well, I mean, come on, to abandon his privacy. Well, Ellis, uh, Ellis, he'll become, and become a, He's a my judge. friend, he's my friend. He'll make a very good judge, I have no doubt. He's, uh, right. he's one of the best lawyers. But he has to be well paid. Well, Lamin, he's also a patriot. He's also a Gambian. He's also, he loves this country. Let me I tell know. you one thing. I know. You know, I know Ellis very well. I know. He's, he's, he's my personal friend. I know. He loves this country. Absolutely. If Ellis is, you know, conditions, if he believes the conditions exist, yeah. he is going to abandon his private practice and go to the bar, uh, go to the bench. Okay. I have no doubt about that because yeah. he loves this country. Absolutely. You know, he's, he's a private practitioner, but who also cares passionately about this country. My Ahmed Fatih. Lawyer and leader of the Gambia Moral Congress. Thank you very much. Uh, the brunch to... continues with the inter-party committee uh, about, uh, of course, current affairs. So don't go away. We will hear from the inter-party. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, you. great. have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond. Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479-980. 8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. Jamano Money Transfer Bureau de Chance, your go-to option when it comes to money transfer. With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible. For your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051 or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Yamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Jamano Money Transfer. Albaka, 
forest de biro gambia tonko na lo mbaria bere ka berin ko na fo kato bari si kodo kino kato ni fo bolon la be 56 branches mo la soda gambia ja ha ka gambia kono ani gambia bantala bankol nko kodo ki a bere kodo si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta mem men na kodi to koto ni kodi maro jannam number 1 di nyonta andum fanan nata anoda enterprise sotale wala wala min di ko domorol fanan kol fanan be firale de dadi manen domorol di fanan be teat gambia dawda yalo ma kum fa kendol sotale di ha e wo moy wala ha afelen da ma ka ni na lafta nyela kendol e bina yalo bu kani la ko la baraka ba yalo del chosa no lo baraka Welcome back to the brunch after our, that discussion with the Honorable Mai Fati. Like I said, I have in the studio uh, members of the Inter-Party Committee. That is the body uh, that uh, encompasses uh, all the political parties in the country who deals with issues between the uh, political parties uh, in the course of elections, after elections, or any time indeed. Um, they've been busy in the provinces, um, going with uh, the team that is promoting the national dialogue launched by the President of the Republic. We will hear from them uh, what uh, has been their activities uh, in the recent past in the provinces. I also have Idrissa Jalo, who, okay, might be out of IPC, but in this capacity he is sitting here as a commentator and analyst uh, uh, about the issues that we are going to discuss. So, I have Ba S. Jabi, who is from the Secretariat of the IPC and the co-chair of the IPC, the Honorable Samba Balle. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good. You have been busy. Let me begin with the uh, co-chair. You have been busy in the provinces, IPC, um, collaborating or in support of the national dialogue process. Tell us exactly where and what have you been doing? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with you here today and uh, good afternoon viewers and uh, actually uh, we have been on the ground the, unfortunately the team that was on the ground to work on that uh, uh, peace plate this in uh, uh, on, on, on the, the presidential dialogue is not here mm. for us we were on the ground there but Jabi was there yeah Jabi okay Jabi is here One he will them. dilate on that mm -hmm. Uh, myself, I'm just from the provinces, but I was on this engagement of establishing women groups countrywide yes. Yes. Uh, for LRR, URR, and the CRR. Exactly. Yes. That is that is that is your activities that is supporting the uh, call for women representation. Women representation political parties political to be increased. Parties, yeah, to be increased. Yeah, so you go to all the women, regions. For, uh, no, we who do you we talk to? Four regions. Uh, who do you talk to when you go there? Uh, here, all political parties send in three participants, and we talk to the governors, to and the chiefs, the alcalde, and so and the, the uh, they come to these meetings, where we discuss with these women groups, and then try to set up a committee there that will look after the regional affairs, especially on women, uh, to convincing them to come and take part in uh, leadership positions in the politics. So they are the people we do discuss with countrywide. But we went to four regions only as a, as a start, because that's where the project ended. And we hope so the objective to is to encourage the women to join politics? Yes, because we and felt that... And for the political that, parties to consider giving women an yeah. uh, in, in terms of seats for them to be able to contest. To contest at, I think there was a recommendation. In, is it in the constitution for at least 14% or some something percent in national assembly? Uh, 30%. 30% for all 30 political percent. parties? Yes, uh, that's the uh, recommendation that okay. we are giving to political parties. But uh, actually, others are able to meet it, others are not able to meet it yet. So it's just something because it's not a, a, a policy that is been put in place for political parties to work by that percentage. Okay. Yes. But it's an advocacy that we are advocating countrywide to all political party leaders. How successful yes. has that been in the past elections? Did you think that any party, particularly or parties, have actually done very well? 
in uh, in allocating or encouraging or promoting uh, female contestants. Uh, yeah, yeah. We had a female yeah. mayor mm. and we had female parliamentarians from different parties. But how the margin of success of this campaign? You think if you were compare the last election? Uh, well, I think there is a success uh, on that. Uh, though uh, we felt some disappointment at other areas mm. where actually the IPC took law, uh, took uh, funds from the he was supported by the ECOWAS where we are supporting about 19 uh, female participants or female who took position who wanted to contest the elections and uh, we went to them convince them talk to them and then give them something to to, to encourage them to go ahead so, but unfortunately, uh, Parliament, uh, we were able to get only three <laughs> women who won elections. Who won, but that but where are the contestants? Uh, impressive. Yeah, the, uh, the contestants, it was impressive because about 19 came up. Okay, 19 in, Yes. And uh, about 50 something came up in the uh, council elections. Council elections. Though we have at least, uh, I, I cannot remember the uh, amount, the number. Only a handful won. got elected. Yes, on, mm. only a handful got elected. But I think they are coming in large numbers now. And uh, the, with the committees that we are able to set up countrywide, this will convince the women for, to come and at least take up leadership positions and decision-making positions. Because so, uh, for their program, at least their affair, they are the only people who are better to speak about their problems, their problems. and so on and tackle it. Better See. than men. So they felt that also it's high time they represent. They look not without at least looking of party affiliation, but at least gender. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, there are people. Do you go with this message? There are people who said the women need to be told that they need to stop being cheerleaders or singers after male politicians. They should consider, you know, putting themselves up for elections themselves. In fact, uh, that was the main message that we are carrying. Uh, we are telling them that uh, if you dig into our political history, you will see that women have long been left out and uh, they are used to clappers, dancers, uh, press singers, cooks, and so on, and also be wearers. So, for, and, uh, follow men and message. clap for them. So, it is high time they come also and at least fight for their own uh, cause. You see? Just like men, because those positions are not meant for men alone. We have, since uh, since uh, independence to now, we have never seen any political party leader who is a female. And the position is not for men alone. Why are they quiet? Why are they not coming up? So all where you hear them is deputy, deputy, deputy. They only deputize in most of these parties. A party leader, maybe the deputy is a party leader, is, is, is a female, or maybe third in command, maybe a mobilizer. Wow. So most of the areas uh, where they are leaders are mobilizers. Mm, so this we want this, this yeah, to change. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh yes. Before I go to specifically to your recent undertakings, uh, engagements in the provinces, you you from the secretariat, uh, you you may be familiar with this campaign, this uh, allocation of contestant, I mean, for women to participate in politics. <laughs> How successful, and what is the new direction for that? Well, I don't think that we have registered um, much success uh, in that direction since uh, 19 women contested and we had only three elected into mm. the... In Fonyi, in Sana Mentering, in Sana Mentering, in the parliamentary and, election. And, and in Banjul, I think. Banjul. Yes. Yes, yes, to Manjai. So, so that is um, less than 5% uh, than of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the desire, uh, the wish has always been, mm. you know, uh, at least... 30 percent of representation should be women but mm. well, unfortunately we haven't been able to achieve that yet mm. so um, going around and then creating platforms for women to advocate for a greater a greater representation in the national assembly has what has motivated actually triggered our our outreach into the in, into the provinces with the support of the UND, mm -hmm. UNDP, of course. Mm -hmm. We started with in URR and then CRR North, CRR South, and LRR. And uh, you know, thank, uh, thankfully, we have been able to launch the rural branch of uh, the Women IPC mm -hmm. 
in these regions mm. you know at least giving them a platform you know where they can co come together as an inter-party committee mm. discuss you know build peace and then advocate for women empowerment not only in politics but even in the economy of the gambia so um, the messages have been received very well we had uh, discovered that there are women alcalos in the in the regions don't we have one in Bigelow? <laughs> yes uh, we, yes i think we have you we have you yeah ajapane is an alcalo you, you, you go to farato there's another there, there, there. there's a woman alcalo there in basi one part of there's a word in basi Kawakawa. Kabakel. Yeah, Kabakawa. Kabakama. Yes, yes Kabakama. There is a woman I'll call a very, a very um, dynamic uh, lady uh, who told us uh, who has been an Alcalo for 40 years now. Ah, yeah. Uh, and then she shared the experience that she had, you know, uh, when she was campaigning to become an Alcalo, the difficulties, the challenges. Mm. But she has been able to overcome all these things. And again, when you go to Nyani in uh, Medina Sadri, mm. we also had a, a woman and Alcalo. Alcalo. Yes, <laughs> it, like and that one is a you know is a young lady. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a young lady. So <laughs> so actually there are you know women are occupying this because at the regional levels you know we think it is important for women to occupy these positions like the chair you know the chairperson of VDCs, mm -hmm. the alcalos, maybe the chiefs, you know the the councillors and uh, and then they can you know start progressing to parliamentarians, ministers, and even presidents. You know in this country so these are the messages that we have been uh, spreading out mm. and uh, we also train them mm. on so some very important skills leadership skills strategies and best practices if they want to actually become uh, leaders you know in their different political parties the government mr chair as you know has had um, has the laws in place you know that that do not discriminate you know gender all you know all these laws are there to help you know the women you know self actualize so it is up to the women now you know to uh, to grab these opportunities that that are available and, and then progress pro, you know progress in politics it is not like um, being unfair to the men but what we realize at the ipc level is you know women are partners they are very important you know part of our population they take care of a lot of a uh, lot of things you know in our lives so we think if they are able to actually uh, get more involved in in politics in the economy you know the country will stand to gain a lot from from their activities like like other countries for instance if you look at india india has a black a very large population of women than the united kingdom well, what if you look at the involvement of women in India and the United Kingdom, you realize that you know women get more involved in England of than, course, than, 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 Prime Minister. than in India. Yeah. So basically, you see you, you see the difference in the, the development. Culture. It has to do with cultural. Culture. Yes. Yeah. So so this this uh, this is the message that we have been giving out to women in the in the regions, and we form them. Now you know we have given them uh, be, you know business to to execute, mm -hmm. and we hope you know the seventh legislature mm -hmm. will will have more women than the sixth legislature it is before we move on to the uh, present engagement what do you make of uh, um, as, as somebody who has been following politics and been a political player yourself uh, uh, what do you make of uh, the women representation in the political parties because the overall objective of the ipc is to encourage political parties to allocate significant uh, number of uh, contested contestable seats for reserved for them so that's the word they use reserved <laughs> for, for, for women well the representation is not up to expectation mm -hmm. why in political parties yes all of them are guilty of that though. all of them mm -hmm. there is none that would say they have 30 percent substantial representation of women in the political parties. In the political parties. Ah. Because most of the time what happens is names are filled, people are said to be occupying positions. Mm -hmm. But is it done in such a way that practice will show that that is what is happening? Mm -hmm. That's the question mark. It's not only the policy. It should move forward to making it a practice. For example, 
If you say you should have 30 percent of women represented in all elective positions, mm -hmm. now what you need to do is to devise a plan to ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. But if you want to sit and wait and sit, tell the woman to apply, you have not been instrumental. Mm -hmm. in you know what's to for them? You have not been instrumental in building their self-esteem prior to that. What you should do now is to encourage them. Go all out, discuss with them, engage them, train them, and then even help them to feel f for these positions. And, you know, create an allotment. You can even go to a level where you will say proportional representation. Mm -hmm. All that will help in bringing them in. At the party level. At the party level. Mm -hmm. And it can even be translated to the national level. But uh, if you just pay lip service to something, mm -hmm. and uh, like Ba said, you have, I think, how many women in the parliament? Three. Three, Three women. Elected. 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 Uh, if there was proportional yeah. representation, yes. we would have encouraged them to be in parliament. We would have got 30%. Right. What is stopping us from doing that? Yes, 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 yes. All we need to do is to really be committed mm -hmm. to what we are saying. Once we are committed to what we are saying, then we will be able to achieve it. Like, like if we said, in each region, each political party is ex expected to at least put up three candidates, uh, at least three female candidates in each region. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do that in constituents, at least in three constituencies, there has to be women candidates from both pol from all political parties. Mm -hmm. By hook or crack, some, well, a lot of women will get elected. And, and besides, uh, you know, we have to look at our cultural background as well. When women stand up for positions, most of the time, uh, being a male, uh, I will not spare myself. We look at them as if they are not eligible the pretenders. for such <laughs> for, for positions. Yeah. In our corners, we will say, ah, dig in the corner of the And that's prejudice. So it's the government that should stand firm and say, okay, now in order to ensure that this prejudice does not hamper our progress, we will create this, this and that for women. And not only women, but people who are differently able. Yes. In the parliament, in the leadership positions, you have people who are differently able, who are lawyers, who are doctors, yes. who are qualified, who are well educated, and perhaps more sincere. Mm -hmm. But if you do not give them that advantage, mm -hmm. the country will stand to lose. You know, you do not look at the person as an individual, mm -hmm. but you should look at the person as part of a set. And the set is the country, is the population. What do we stand to gain from your intellectual being? Mm -hmm. What do we stand to gain from another person's intellectual being? What do we, do we stand to lose if we lose that person? Good point. Okay, let's go straight to Bar. Um, you, the National Dialogue, it was launched here, uh, I think beginning of the year or last year. Uh, there was a huge meeting at the Sedaura Kareva Conference Center. The President uh, announced his uh, goodwill um, ambition to get the people to talk to him and directly, including his political opponents, to know what's uh, they, they are feeling or they are making of issues and then the program was supposed to carry on to be an ongoing thing and to go to the provinces. Now the IPC was involved in, in it. How is IPC's participation and what have you been doing? Actually the, uh, the inter-party committee had been invited uh, to become part of a team. They call it a preparatory team. Mm -hmm. You know that actually laid down the, the grounds for this uh, national dialogue to mm -hmm. take place. Mm -hmm. And on the 12th of February, uh, 2024, uh, you know, we, uh, political parties converge 
at the office of the president together with the president of course to uh, to talk ab about peace and to interact and then exchange ideas of how to uh, build and maintain peace in the Gambia uh, particularly in the political landscape mm -hmm. so on the 14th of February uh, there was another on the 16th of February rather there was another convergence at the Sadaoda Kairawa Jawara Conference Center where um, the the team actually that uh, prepared the grounds for this uh, uh, inter-party dialogue you know invited all the stakeholders you know like the the security the security sector were there the religious groups were there media. you know the media was there different sectors different um, different fields of uh, production were actually invited you know to attend this conference and here at the, at the Kairawa conference center you know uh, t you know teams were actually uh, created mm -hmm. there were thematic areas mm -hmm. that were discussed and how uh, and, uh, by identifying challenges and uh, uh, developing strategies of how to overcome these challenges and later on uh, the preparatory team were tasked to come up with a uh, with a resume mm -hmm. you know a, a summary yeah. of all that had happened oh. at Sadaoda Kairawa Conference Center. Center. Yes. So this was actually later presented mm -hmm. to the president and it was um, divided into thematic areas, mm -hmm. politi politics, agriculture, religion, mm -hmm. you know, this, uh, this back way, this yeah, back way uh, syndrome, etc., etc. And the preparatory team encouraged, actually impressed the president that, you know, these national dialogues will not have stopped only at the urban areas at the national level mm. but uh, there should be a step down uh, step down activity mm. this was what ac actually prompted the the regional tours and the all the regions in the gambia were covered i i was um, opportune to to belong to the north bank region mm. uh, team i see yes so we 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 went to the north bank region and we we had a a very fruitful and pragmatic discussions with the with the people the the governors were our host. Ah, which uh, governors? Because uh, we all the <laughs> there have been a, a musical chair, <laughs> you know, involving them in the past. Is well, the ones that were there before yesterday. No, yeah, the ones the replacement. You no, know, yeah, 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 the ones that were there before yesterday <laughs> were actually uh, our host. And um, you know, particular, you know, there is one particular governor that I really want to mention. Uh, that is a. Uh, Madam Fatu Jame Ture. Okay. You know, she had been, you know, she she's she's actually the governor of North Bank region. Well, she has been able to, until yesterday. Until yesterday? Yeah. Oh, that's news to me. Yeah, you see. Yeah. Lamin Sedekan is back. Okay. Madam Jame had been very, very uh, welcoming, very instrumental, very accommodating, you know. She has been able to uh, accompany us uh, to, to, throughout the entire exercise. We started at Ngeen Sanyan, we went to Farafenye. We went to uh, Kintokunda, we went to Njabakunda, we went to uh, Baribus, yes. Yeah, we went to Njabakunda and we went to Nyomi Jurunku. Oh yes. And then from Nyomi Jurunku we went to Kuntaya and we you know we ended up at uh, uh, Esau, mm. you know, where George Songo, you know, was And what has been the message you take to these people about this national land? You know, we actually deliberated on the thematic areas mm. like politics. Mm. What are the issues that is making that is uh, making politics a, a difficult activity in this country. Mm. The, 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 the polar, you know, the, the toxic way, the, the toxic nature of our politics. Mm. What can we do in, in order for people to see politics as a development tool, not as a, not as a system where people, you know, people will fight each other and people will be insulting each other, uh, abusing each other. And of, of particular interest in that team is the, the draft constitution. Mm. You know the controversy surrounding the you know draft constitution. How people can have uh, a consensus mm. regarding the draft constitution is something that we also discuss. How well <laughs> informed are these people about the draft constitution? Is there any particular area they they, they actually want to talk about it more? I was, I you know you know maybe this is not a good word, maybe it's not a nice word, but I was surprised mm. that the level of the level of awareness mm. of 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 rural Gambia. Mm. Is, is very very high particularly when it comes to this draft constitution when we started talking about the draft constitutions you know women you know elderly people were given very constructive very very constructive in fact they knew the minute details mm. that had been the bone of contention is that the freedoms or the religious like like you know, you know, 
presidential terms. No, no the, the, the presidential term is something that you know, they all agree that is the term limits are something that everybody agreed to. Mm. You know, but when it comes to the controversial issues like the religion, you know, religion like this, whether uh, the circular clause should be there or not. The, the circular, yeah, the circular clause and the the nature of how they define marriage. Oh, okay. marriage, okay, and this uh, women act, you know, uh, that is a. Uh, not allowing women to marry before 18 years oh. are issues that they actually you know grabbed and analyzed and commented on so when it comes to agriculture mm. you know uh, many of them actually complain about the 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 timeline you know i mean i mean the periods that they they are able to access mm -hmm. you know fertilizer mm -hmm. they are able to access you know crops you know so a uh, and the fact that they don't have machines yeah, like machines, yes. machines like uh, uh, tractors and all that oh they mentioned whatever about yeah, yeah they, they, you know the, in fact all of them all, all of them mentioned that you know they need mechanized farming now right, exactly yeah mechanized farming so when it comes to uh, uh, religion like i said the secular issue you know that, it, that was that very contentious yeah really yeah, yeah it's very contentious Good. Yeah. Ah, so <coughs> while you were there mm -hmm. they are certainly was a huge controversy uh, over what the president said uh, at his political uh, inauguration of his political bureau in Brikama. Many people said he has <coughs> misspoken. Well, the opposition obviously bounced on it. And if you believe they are making meals of it, but there are others who are not politicians, who naturally uh, you would think are neutrals. They all made comments on this that the president uh, should and could have avoided that, you know, that area. And then many people suggested that IPC had a role in it because consistently you have been, your office have been advocating for uh, civility in terms of what the politicians can say. Mr. Chairman, when the IEC heard about this controversy and of course calls for you to intervene, what has been your reaction and what do you intend to do? Uh, actually, uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You know, here, what one should focus on is the nature of the statement that was uh, heard over the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, as uh, at IPC, we don't conclude yet mm -hmm. because uh, on Monday we are going to sit over this mm -hmm. and have a, a plenary discussion and then come up with at least uh, a, a, a point mm -hmm. whether it is uh, whatever we are going to do is not yet confirmed until after our plenary that is on monday mm -hmm. so this why it is uh, uh, very uh, premature. premature for the ipc yeah. to talk and analyze about that speech yet mm -hmm. because we need a uh, plenary that have the power mm -hmm. to decide on certain issues mm -hmm. before they come out so until we have plenary then we'll be able to have a detailed analysis of what and when you say plenary, you mean all the party representatives? All the party representatives. So we have a meeting, we call them mm -hmm. to the plenary, and there we will sit, discuss such issues, and so on. And then whatever we conclude at, we have our media team, they will, uh, will write, and then the media will uh, put it in the uh, social media. And, yeah. So until that, you constrain to say... Constrain to say... <laughs> we well, one man who not constrained, um, is speak, <coughs> speaking as a free man and individual capacity as a commentator is Idrissa Jalo. Idrissa, well, um, what do you make of the huge controversy that greeted the President's speech in Brikama? Uh, well, taking advantage of my position here as a neutral person exactly. who is not representing any political shade, mm -hmm. I would really want to look at it from this angle that there is a statement out there which is subjected to interpretation by different members of society and you have larger society that receives all this information and should make decisions <laughs> as we are here in this panel today, what we should do is to look at how to solve this problem without 
aggravating the issue. That's important. Because in every country, when peace is under threat, mm. it is the duty of such citizens mm. to come up with ideas, solutions mm. to circumvent that. Yes. The statement, be it from the president mm. or another person, any statement that is designed to demean, dehumanize a fellow human being should not be seen as a positive statement. Because as human beings, the first thing that we must all appreciate and acknowledge is we are all created equally. We all have the right to live, the right to freedoms, the right to many other things. But we must not also forget that we have our interests. And it is these interests that drives us to do things that might not go down well with others. Mm. Now, how are we going to make sure that our interest does not hamper the freedoms or progress of other people? Why would an elderly person of 50 years and above, I'm not even talking of the president, I'm talking of an ordinary Gambian. Why should I just out of my own thinking stand on a podium and demean Lamin Chan or demean Bajabi or try to dehumanize him? What am I trying to achieve? Yeah, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Do I want people to look at him in a low light? Do I want uh, to encourage him to be an asset to the nation? Because when you make people shun someone or move away from being encouraged to listen and help in the guiding process of building a human being, you are putting that person in isolation. Mm -hmm. And once you put that person in isolation, then you will not benefit any more from him. Because whatever comes from him, positive or negative, you will not. You have already. Yes, you have already made up your mind. Yeah. So to start with, that is wrong. From whichever quarter it comes from, mm -hmm. it's wrong. The statement was wrong. Yes. The statement set him so, to break out. But what do we do now? Mm -hmm to make sure that all of these people realize that they owe an obligation to the Gambian populace to maintain peace and tranquility, to work for progress and prosperity. We have a lot of other issues to address rather than sit down and castigate one another. Today, a bag of rice is $2,200. 3200 If you go to Jahari Pachar, I am, as I am speaking to you, 75% of the rice fields are not being utilized because there is no water. The tractors are unable to dig the furrows for water to flow. We are here starving whilst we have all the land we have the human resources to till the land. What we need is goodwill to enable those people to till that land to feed us. We, we are losing two things at the same time. One, our people are not as productive as they should be. It is increasing their poverty. Mm -hmm. And two, we are here buying rice that is not first class, that is not of very high quality. Good. So these two things, they are all to the disadvantage of the Gambian people. That so is, you believe? That is what should have occupied the discourse. Yeah. And not... It's like in Mandinka. Sula Kumo Bije, Anin Kachola Kachafanan Bije. 
ni mukacho la kachaliti. I see. Sura kacha. Wale mbe balu la nyami. Mbe boro soto la nyami. Ne digul be karan la nyami. Baku ya be stop la nyami. Wale musura kachati. Nde sura tawo kacha shifal. Wano be asilo na yako. Aye bo ne nyato unkoro bulu. Nang karte faiye. Wala nte karte faile purie modo tootina. Mbe karte faile dalilo minkan. Wala muya itendi na metemi la ninsi la jumala pur gambia ya fansoto. Good, good point. Now, um, <coughs> now that I tell you what the reactions have been, the various interpretations, the opposition political party said the president, um, like he said, uh, words are hate speech. The Human Rights Commission is concerned that uh, this be, they've written to the AG and to the president con expressing concern. The, the political opponents, like said, have condemned it. The president's supporters and uh, staff said um, it was a joke taken too far and there's no need to apologize. Of course, others said it is a lesson they have learned in future the presidents would be really uh, we will have this in mind when he gives for the public speeches. This is what happened. Can Which, I come in? Yeah. Okay, if you want me to dwell on this, on this, I will have to look at the IPC. IPC yeah. Uh, because it is the single institution yeah. in this country mm -hmm. that has membership in the most remote parts of this country. That is why the people have asked but like it and said, they are coming yeah. up with an action. They are in their discussions. Mm -hmm. I don't want to preempt those discussions. Yeah. But I will encourage them mm -hmm. to also think of many alternatives mm -hmm. in order to address mm -hmm. this issue. I think the IPC is a better place than any other institution, even the National Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. to address this issue. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they have the political actors. And this was made on a the, political platform. And this was made on a political platform. And not necessarily government office. No. And in IPC, mm -hmm. every political activist, every political party mm -hmm. has a representative in the IPC. But and co-chair, your personal views about this. I know the IEC, you said, should co as, as a body, is, is not yet ready on uh, making a policy, but your individual uh, concern about this, if there is any. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me come before my boss comes, the, mm. the co-chair. Mm. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, uh, make it very clear mm -hmm. that the Interparty Committee, like uh, Mr. Jalo said, is a committee of all registered political parties in this country, mm -hmm. both ruling and the opposition. Yeah. And we have been able to, you know, craft homogeneity, you know, when it comes to our business, you know, when it, when it comes to IPC business, you know, political callers are disregarded. Are disregarded. Are disregarded. We 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 look at the Gambia and see what will benefit the Gambia politically, and that's where you know we drive towards. IPC is not an opposition organ, neither a, a, a government, a pro-government organ. You know, what we do is we look at what is best for the Gambia and, and, and that's what we will discuss on and come up with policies that will benefit everybody, including both the opposition and, and the government. So that that point should be made clear. very, very clear. Yeah. All right. And now when it comes to these statements, um, Mr. Chair, uh, in, when there is a phenomenon, a situation, um, you have to look, you know, look, look at different dimensions. You know, there has to be different dimensions. The historical dimension, the current dimension, and the future consequences of, 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 of this uh, phenomenon. So, when, you know, looking at the... We were, we were in the provinces when this statement was made in Prikama at, the, you know, at this place. And uh, in the, the, the coach here was with me, and we were, we, we were a bit alarmed, you know, when we look at the social media. The, the kind of language that was being used for and against, you know, uh, uh, the, the president, and we were concerned, very, very concerned, that this could have, this could harm the interparty cooperation mm. that the IPC has tirelessly, tirelessly, and relentlessly tried to build in this country, mm. so so that there will be cooperation and dialogue, you know, be, between political parties when issues like this arise. Right, yeah. So we were concerned about that. Okay, but then. 
like my chairman said, we haven't taken any firm decision Absolutely, yet. Yeah. Because because we, 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 the process that is on yeah. is to actually look at this phenomenon, yeah. you know, analyze it, mm -hmm. you know, and see what are the causes. Mm -hmm. Why why are you know big big people like the head of state or the head of uh, political parties always attacking attacking each other, you know, in public? I see. What is triggering this? I see. What, what is this stimulus? that is actually causing these things to happen the ipc has to you know look at that and analyze it and understand it then then when the, that understanding is attained then we will be able to draw strategies actually guidelines mm. of what you know we need to do in order to enhance greater interparty you know cooperation and understanding for peace to have a chance in this country because as we are getting very close to the election year 2026 mm -hmm. and the inc and there is an increasing number of political parties mm -hmm. all interested in you know going out uh, to campaign for our votes you know there is a likelihood mm -hmm. that you know in fact the our politics that has been so much polarized mm -hmm. can can become more polarized there can be more tension it, it can, there, there, there can be more tension there can be more chaos and and, and peace will be the victim so we have not taken a firm position yes we are studying this matter you know historically mm -hmm. you know you know and, and then trying to you know, also look at it with, within the framework of the current affairs mm -hmm. and the likely consequences of actions or non-actions okay regarding these things chairman finally uh, of course you, you cannot speak on the <coughs> point yeah. of view of the iec but uh, I, ipc but i was asking ba, ba avoided that uh, he dodged that uh, question his personal impression uh, of the speech. Uh, thank you very much. You know, here, uh, my personal opinion mm. is that uh, when something happens, always what one should consider and uh, retrospect mm. what have triggered what have happened. Mm. Mm. Unless you are able to get the root cause mm. of anything, you will be, it will be premature for you to give analysis mm. of that. Okay. Because you may analyze it wrongly mm. and then have a wrong uh, picture. But it's been, of it's, it's been one week or so, and this thing has been all over <coughs> social yeah. media and all medias. You, you, you said you find it difficult to form an opinion yeah. about what might happen. To, uh, uh, now, actually, because mm. this is a concern uh, that we uh, actually all affected, mm. and as an institution that is. Uh, 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 embracing all political parties and yeah. this thing happened at a political rally mm. so that made it more concern to us mm. and uh, therefore if we want to rush we would get it wrong mm. and this we don't want Good. because all what we are thinking of is what mm. the gambian person going to benefit from it exactly or the effect that what effect it is going to do yeah. the harm it is going to do but you want to come in and so on yes. Yeah, yes. so these are the things that we are yeah thank you very much uh, yes my I, I did not uh, no, hear my personal opinion my personal opinion mm -hmm. is um let the advisors the political advisors to the president mm -hmm. actually endeavor mm -hmm. at at all times you know to it, it is very difficult to separate the state from party politics mm -hmm. especially when the ruling party you know candidate is the head of state yeah so so it is difficult you know but it is not you know insurmountable mm. you know can they can we have a, a situation where polit you know opening political party bureaus should be handled by campaign managers mm. of political parties mm -hmm. if the head of that political party is the president of the republic of the country I see. because because if the president goes actually he is a politician mm. If he goes to open political bureaus of his, you know, of, of his parties, mm. you know, one will not be surprised if he gives political statements. Yes. And and as a head of state, you are not a head of state of only one political party. Yes. You are a head of state of all the political parties in this country. Yeah. So it, it will f it will be very much. Um, there are implications. There are implications. There are consequences. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to one political party bureau and then you start, you know, uh, talking about that po that uh, political party as a head of state. Particularly when you are directly when you talking talk against, or even if you talk about the presidency, yes, because you might be the head of the head of your party, yes, but the presidency belongs to everybody. So if you say anything about your own job, 
naturally people will be interested. Your job belongs to everybody. You, you That's where the problem is. Often presidents find it difficult. Yes. <laughs> they think that the, the job is their job. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm the editor in chief of the standard. <laughs> exactly. I can sit here and say, but it, it's a public job. It's a public job. So when he talks about himself, that's fine. Yeah. But when you talk about your job, other people have taken your job. So they will be interested in mm. what you said about your job. Yes. <clears throat> you know, my take well, is, is, well, you know, the thing is I, I think like uh, like Mr. Fati said, the statement, you, you see, it's not even in the interest of the president um, for his image to speak in that manner, even if it is a joke. Because, you see, it damages the reputation of the holder of that office. You see, if you listen, if you follow the uh, Jammes regime, one of the things that damaged Jammes' reputation internationally, so that when even he needed international support, he didn't get it, is because he damaged his own reputation through his own rhetorics. Phrases like, the whole world can go to hell, and I will do what I'll do. Let me often say that. I will rule for one billion years. I have found AIDS, a cure for AIDS, as long as it's on a Thursday or on, with a banana leaf or whatever. These statements have demonized Jammes' image around the world. It was common to go to some other country and they said, where are you from? You say, I'm from Gambia. Ah, you are the one whose president said you, you rule for one billion years. Oh, are you are the one whose president said he will, uh, he will cure yeah. AIDS. You see, if somebody in Farafenye or Badibu said this, it wouldn't matter. But if the head of state said it, it matters. It amplifies all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then these are the statements that gave Jammy an image that destroyed his image. So consider this statement. I will rule for one billion years. Uh, the whole world can get to hell. Compare it to I will rule until the opposition leader dies. You see, these three statements are not far apart in terms of somebody who is looking for awkwardness. All, all these statements sound awkward. So therefore, it is not even the interest of the president, even if it is provoked to make such a statement, even if it's a joke. Because in the end, it's your own image that it is going to destroy like it did with Jammeh. Yeah. So that's my take on it. Even if it is for no political reasons, or even if it is not for interest of anybody, for the president's own interest, it was good to talk in a way that will not destroy your image. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my take. Yes, you are right. Uh, well, you have mentioned it. Then whenever you find yourself in a situation that is challenging, you must look for a path to follow to wriggle out of that challenge and uh, be yourself again. We are caught in this trap of people throwing jabs on one another. What do we do? Because the two political parties that are involved, whether we like it or not, to have a command over a significant segment of our population. And any one of them, if attacked or touched, can turn this country into an ungovernable state. We must avoid that. We must be conscious of that as Gambians. So, with permission from my chair, my co-chair, the IPC should be very tactful, should be very careful in handling this matter because it is very delicate. And being the umbrella organization uh, that has all the parties registered with them, they have the onerous task of steering this ship of state to safe waters. Yet they must avoid being dragged into muddy waters. 
It's very good. And in doing so, there are two things. The last time our secretary, through the instruction of our co-chair, wrote a very good statement, which we all read and we were all happy about. I even commented on it, mm -hmm. sincerely. And what did this statement try to achieve was to make sure that there is civility in the way we do our politics. They did that. They took these letters to the two main parties, these same parties, and they were expecting to be invited for a discourse, political discourse. It never happened. Both parties did not no. did not follow up. It did, did not, not respond. It never happened, not to my knowledge. And I did you ask, would have known. It, it, it did not happen. So here we are in the same situation. And we are told, react. That is why I do agree with co-chair that he, we as IPC must take time and look at the various options we have. Because if we had never written a statement, we could have just said, uh, write this statement, it may be impactful. But now we have done it. After three months, the occurrence has happened. So it means our statement was not taken as we would have loved it to be taken. Good point. Now, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. To ensure that both the both or all political leaders in this country are under the influence of the citizenry. Under the influence of the citizenry, mark that. Because there is no political party leader who dares challenge the citizens. Because they are the ones who will vote you in, they, will, they are the ones who will give you the capacity to lead. Indeed. So, what would we do? You cannot go and talk to the political leader that way. You cannot also write a letter and expect him to react. And you control no instrument of coercion. You don't control the police. You do not control the army. You do not, you do not control the judiciary. Not, now, what other options are you left with? Yes, there is an option. And a better option. And, and that is. And what is that option? I will recommend for any group, mm -hmm. but I think the IPC is better suited. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's what. That's what. To I'm do that, mm -hmm. organize a peace conference, and in that peace conference, tell the head of state to write what he believes is the route to peace. Sign it. Come and mount the podium, give a statement on it, and let it and every other political party leader do the same. Even those who contested for presidential elections and do not have political parties should be involved because they also do have people behind them. Do the same, present the same, we will be able to compile that and redistribute it to all of them and even send it to schools. Mm. So that tomorrow, mm. if the person who is an author to that and made such a statement mm -hmm. is caught doing exactly the opposite of what he has declared as the best path to peace. Will be held accountable. He will be held accountable mm. and the people will despise him. Mm. Wow. Okay. That's the only route so it. far, yeah. uh, I, uh, that I have seen, mm -hmm. that could tame the situation and no one will feel threatened. We've all experienced here during mm -hmm. the days when people will go to b b bed mm -hmm. fearing to receive a phone call. Phone call and we drag, drag, and drag to We do not want to sing to that level. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Idrissa. <laughs> Jalo, yeah. commentator. And of course, a member of the IPC himself too. Ba Javi from the Secretariat and uh, Samba Balde co-chair. Thank you all, gentlemen, for being on the brunch. And we wish you 
good luck and good judgment as you deliberate on how to respond to uh, the controversial uh, issue about the president's speech uh, in Brikama. Thank you very much for being on the project. It's all been our pleasure. And best of luck in your endeavors <coughs> in the national dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Levin. The brunch will be back on Saturday. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more, because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personals who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps, and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway, or you can call us on 7657-479. 9808483340-9400 or 6359906 Jamano Money Transfer Bureau de Chance Your go-to option when it comes to money transfer With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible for your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051 or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Jamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Jamano Money Transfer.
Agadani. Okay, Mbidan, Agadani. Albaka. Mbaka, 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 Sorry. I got it. Kodo si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyadi lafta mem men na kodi to koto ni kodi maro jannam number 1 di nyonta andum fana nata anoda enterprise sotal wolam wolam nyinti ko domorol fana kol fana be firale de dadi mani domorol di fana be teat gambia dawda yalo ma kum fa kendol sotal di ha e wo moy o diat ha afelenta ma wo ka ni ma lafta nyelan kendol e binaji yalo bu kanina ko wala barka ha 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 yalo del tosa no lo barka